starting a business is perhaps one of the smartest ways to build wealth, but it's an exciting process, but it has many pain points. Today, I want to walk you through a journey of business startup and precisely what it takes uh, to be successful. Now, in today's broadcast, I'm going to be looking at two important concepts because what we are seeing is that millions of businesses across the world, they get started. But guess what? Many of those businesses struggle in the process of the business startup. Why? Because all of the pieces of the puzzles are not put together. So today, what I'm going to attempt to do is to look at some of those important elements of the puzzle that you want to take the time to really understand as an entrepreneur or a rising star in business to be able to navigate this entire um, business process. Now, after many years, 20 plus years in business, we are seeing a common phenomenon across the world with business startup. So Global Capital Inc. and 10X Branding and Marketing LLC out of New York, we have started a signature project, which we call the Pitch Deck 101. Now, today I want us to look at two elements that is vital to the business process. And there's one thing to start your business, but one of the ultimate vision of every entrepreneur is that you want to cash flow maximize your business. But the cash flow maximize is not automatic. Now, I want to encourage you to come to our website also, which is pitchdeck101.org and uh, study that, that website with us. Now, what I'm going to go into now is what research is showing. And research is showing that among the millions of businesses that are starting every year, many of those businesses struggle to access capital. Yes, and access to capital is one of the main reasons why we are seeing millions of businesses across the world are struggling to grow and scale. In fact, in the, even in the developed world where we have set up our operation also, we are interfacing with entrepreneurs who have the same experience like persons in developing economy. Information is power. What I'm going to give you here today is the kind of information that you need to make better business decision. Now, while many businesses are struggling to access capital, I want to emphasize this. There is no shortage of capital. Zilch, absolutely no shortage of capital in the market. The key is information. And when you have the right body of knowledge, the right body of information, it allows you to make better business decision in terms of how you can access capital. So that's one of the dilemma that we're seeing. Most businesses struggle to access the capital. And I'm gonna talk about that briefly. But let me also talk about the your second challenge that we're seeing. We're seeing that even when businesses access the capital, they do not know enough about the investment portfolio to exit that portfolio in a timely manner. So it has to save on the cost of that debt and access the equity, leverage the equity into other smart investment portfolios to start to build wealth. In our platform, we are not just saying access capital. We are saying that there are much more that you need to understand about the business access to capital process before you take the capital. All right. We are not the traditional players that is just going to say access to the capital and that's the beginning and the end. No, <laughs> there is so much more that you need to understand to make access to capital fun and exciting. All right. And stay with me long enough. I will give you a whole lot of information to make you smile, all right? So we talked very briefly about access to capital, and we talked very briefly about how to 
exit the debt portfolio. We see in businesses struggle to access, and when you access, you struggle to exit. So these are two major things that we've seen that businesses are struggling with. But one of the things that we keep emphasizing is that long before you take a debt, you want to know how you're going to cash flow that debt. And to cash flow that debt means that you are taking the time to understand your market. You're taking the time to understand who is your ideal client, the size of your market, you know, how to position your brand in front of them, what are the accommodators and the enablers, and how to leverage this entire process to achieve the business cash flow potential. Now, in the absence of all of this, you can take a debt, you can get access to capital, but you're not able to fully monetize the business process. And your inability to monetize cash flow, that entire business process and the debt is going to put you in a, bar, in a bad spot. All right. So now let's get into some of the nitty gritty. So we're going to be talking about capital portfolios, first of all. And there are many types of capital portfolios. For example, there is debt, there is equity, there is credit, and there is smart capital portfolio. And as an entrepreneur, you need to take the time to fully understand these different types of financial instruments. Now, as a business owner and entrepreneur, if you do not have the time to focus on this, you at least need to have some one within your team dynamics that understand this or you have a consultant that understand this process and can work with you to help you navigate this entire process and let me go into some of the reason why this is necessary the average person who is getting into business you are thinking access to capital access to capital access to capital and one of the first places that you're thinking about is the debt capital market or the commercial banks. But to access capital from the debt capital, the DCM, it means that you have to reach the pre-qualification criteria. So if you had looked at any of my previous programs, you would have seen that I went very deep into pre-qualification criteria. Some banks may ask for historical financial data. Some banks may ask for corporate culture, team dynamics, your business plan, financial projections. There are all of these things that represents the pre-qualification criteria before the DCM um, allocate monies to you for your, for your investment portfolio. And I want to say this. The DCM, in many cases, it might look as though they are being tough on you by all of the pre-qualification criteria that they are asking for. But one thing that I want you to, 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 to address and to focus on is that the DCM, whether big or small, they are not investing their personal funds and they are risk avert. They want to ensure that their investment has minimum risk. All right. So in most cases, you may not reach the pre-qualification criteria. All right. Depending on where you are in the world. But in most cases, again, depending on where you are in the world, you don't have financial instruments option. In most cases, you are dependent on a single financial market, meaning the debt capital market, the DCM. So when one bank says no, you can only rotate around different banks. And if your uh, historical data remains the same, it's going to create some difficulty for you unless you're very creative. So in the absence of you personally having the historical financial data, there are still other platforms that you can use to prop that up to still access the DCM. And a quick example that I want to give to you today is that you may be a rising star in business. You have done your research. You have, you know, you have dig in deep. You fully understand what you're about, but you have no historical data. Is that a problem? Yes. But is there a solution to that problem? Yes. And you want to be creative enough to understand that. Our role as consultant is to, when you come with a problem, we point you in the solution. 
And one of the solution that you can look at here is perhaps identify someone who would have been in business for 5, 10, 15 years, who have that historical data, and you broker a vertical or horizontal partnership with them. That fix that problem almost immediately. All right. So in this case, you're able to now leverage the DCM, get the funding that you need to move the process forward. Of course, doing that may not be the easiest thing because you may have to go through the no like and trust factor, or you've got to be very good in that negotiation process. Ensure that you have someone on your team that can do negotiation for you. So this is not the only solution, but again, my role is to show you possibilities. And if you need that kind of support, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to engage with you. All right. So feel free to reach out to us at pitchdeck101.org. Now, there are other financial instruments that are available. They're equity. Um, and what equity means? Equity means that you set up your business and uh, it depends on where you're setting it up. In the U.S., perhaps you would need an S-Corp or a C-Corp that allows you to allocate shares to potential investors. And by simply by that share allocation, you're able to raise capital that you can put back into your business. But the one that I really want to sink into today is what we call credit, business credit. And business credit is something for you to, to know really take the time to learn, you know, to apply and to master, because it is one of the easiest platforms that you can leverage to get the much needed capital that you need to move your business forward. Now, for that, you have a number of pre-qualification criteria that you need to reach. For equity, Depending on if you're going to VC or a private equity investors, they too will be looking for pre-qualification. The VC, yes, they may come and invest with you uh, pre-income. That's a good thing. But there are certain indicators that they will be looking for before they come on board with you. With credit capital, business credit, it's different. Now, to leverage business credit, there's a couple of things that you would need to do. The business will have to be registered in a proper manner. And after that business is registered in a proper manner, there's a couple of things that you would need to do. You would need to take steps to ensure that you have your EIN or your ITIN. You would need to take steps to ensure that you are taking the right steps to have your PDX score. And in the world of business, in the developed world, in the U.S., you need to have that paid X score because that's what's going to enable persons to, you know, to assess your credit worthiness. All right. Now, when you get that, there's a still a few other steps that you would need to take to be able to uh, build up a solid track record. Now, there's a fast way to doing this and there's a slow way to doing this or there's a normal way to do this. You have choice. The beauty about saying all of this is that we have access to the people that can fast track this process for you. So within 30, 60, 90 days, you can perhaps get access to uh, 150,000 um, US dollars at 0% APR. And just let me sink in here a little bit. Let us settle in. Can you imagine that you're accessing 150 Ks and a few months, one, two, three months at 0% APR. You can't beat that. You're not going to get that with debt. You're not going to get that with equity, but you can get that with business credit. And let me explain what a 0% APR means. 0% APR means that if it's for 6, 12, or 18 months, it means that you have absolutely no interest rate to pay for this period of time. All right? So you can take that money, wash that money, invest that money, flip that money, turn it left, right, and center, 
all right, within that window, and you have absolutely no interest to pay on that debt. That's music to your ears, or at least it should be music to your ears. So the right uh, business consultant will be able to walk you through this entire process. And I'm happy to say to you, feel free to reach out to us at Pitch Deck because we are here to give you that kind of information to really help you to make better business decision, to help you access the capital, to help you to scale faster, all right, in the interest of achieving the business vision that you have for yourself. Now, this is one of the beauty of living in the US, one of the beauty of setting up business in the US. There's so much more, but I'm gonna speak in a narrow window here today, which is access to capital. And um, you have so much of advantage. The key is information. From the research that we have done, we are inter interfacing with persons for many years. We see that they are stuck. Why? Because they don't have the right information. They don't have the right access. We have been to the ground. We have established that kind of relationships with multiple stakeholders in the effort, in the interest of being that middle ground that can give business access, businesses access to the much needed capital that they need to move their vision forward. So, so far we have looked at three financial instruments. We looked at debt, we looked at equity, we look at credit, business credit, all right? I will, later on, I will continue to talk on these subjects and go deeper into these subject matters so you have a much clearer idea. But in the moment, you can reach out to us. I'll be happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with you to show you what's possible. Now, what I want to try in here very quickly before I go to the, <coughs> the second part of it, so we talk about access to capital and access to market because access to market is key. I want us to talk a little bit about foreign nationals. Now, if you are a foreign national who have a business and you want to expand your market into the US, we can help you set up your entire platforms. We have persons on our team that will get you properly set up, get your business properly set up, Ensure that you have your, your ITIN as a foreign national. You will have to start with your ITIN. We'll later on move on to your EIN. We'll get your done and um, done. You will get your FICO score, your PDX score properly um, taken care of. And we'll start to get you trade lines. All right. And um, there are multiple types of trade lines that we will work with you to ensure that you get it. So you're settled in into the US don't have to be rough. We can help you navigate that rough terrain, all right? Because we will help you access the capital. If you need housing, we have players on our team that are certified, licensed real estate um, players that will help you either access rentals or access purchase. The icing on the cake we'll help you access the capital to make the purchase too, all right? We have quite a number of financial equity, private equity investors who are in our team. We'll discuss the various models with you so you have choices, all right? If you want, you know, hard money, if you want debt capital, if perhaps you want to go through, you know, you know the FHA, uh, you have all of those options that are available to you. Perhaps you might be able to leverage FHA if you have a local partner. The sky's the limit, all right? We have done the research. We have done the groundwork. We have built out the team dynamics to give you the support as a foreign national to properly integrate into the U.S. Um, market. And I want to say this, all of our players are highly certified, by the state to function effectively and giving you the representation that you need. All right. So if you're in business and you want to grow and expand into the U.S. market, I want to encourage you to touch base with pitchdeck 101earth You can send me an email. You can just go to my the website. You can go to contact us. 
send us that email and I'll be happy to talk with you. Now, of course, access to capital is, you know, a critical part of doing business. But we would not be responsible if we are not saying to you, before you even start thinking about capital access, you want to start thinking about cash flow potential. And the cash flow potential of your operation, of your business, should not be a guesstimate, all right? It should be based on market data. It should be based on critical market intelligence. And this means that you're really taking the time, you and your team, or your business consultant, and that's why we are here, to ensure that we are doing that market research for you, to help you to understand your market, your market size, how your market is geographically dispersed, if your market type is the right fit for you. If not, is there ways in which we can tweak this? And just let me explain this just a little bit. Very often in marketing, there's this perception that if you cannot pay, you are not a client. <laughs> that is yes and no. And I want to say this because of the fact that if you can find someone to pay for a hundred clients, a thousand clients to utilize your products, they become paying clients. But you need to understand this entire framework for it to work for you. So what we do when we start to do that marketing research, marketing ana analysis, uh, helping you to identify the accommodators and the enablers, um, we develop these case studies, we develop these systems that push you beyond just speculation. And you want to go way beyond speculation. You want to take the guesswork out of doing business. You want to take the guesswork out of the potential of your business to cash flow. You want to know that you know you have critical information. And beyond the information, you're leveraging that data to build the right relationship with the accommodators, with the enablers that will guarantee the business cash flow. That's where we come in. All right, we're going to put you in contact with the right people. This is called the market access. You just don't want access to capital. You don't have market access. And market access can mean many things. Later on, we're going to go into that. But in essence, what I'm saying here, you don't want access to capital. And you cannot or you do not know the most effective and prudent manner to leverage capital. If you do not know this, it means that you can be taking a debt, but that debt can become a bad debt. It can become a liability. And that can affect you in so many different ways. Because in the developed world, they're either using your FICO score or they're using your PDEX score. And when those things get messed up, it means that you're not fundable. And if you're not fundable, it means that you're stuck unless you're creative, unless you understand how to repair this process fast enough to get back on track. What we do is to ensure that you have the information long before disaster strike, so you can prevent a disaster. So today is just to really get your feet a little wet in terms of what we are doing at Pitch Deck 101. We are here for you. And uh, there's a couple of things that I want to say in closing. Today, we looked at the fact that many businesses start, but they struggle. Why? Because they're not able to access capital. And even when they access capital, they struggle to exit. With us, believe me, that's a thing of the past because we have studied the system. We have built the system. The system is being implemented. It's working. We got the results, and we're going to give that to you. So along with this is access to market. You want to know your market. You don't want to start a business. You don't want to get into a market and you don't understand the terrains that you're playing in. You want to know your accommodators, your enablers, and ensure that you're taking the time to build healthy, productive relationship with the accommodators and the enablers. Now, in conclusion, what I want to say is that in my last book, 10X Branded and Marketing Blueprint, I give a blueprint that I believe every business should 
really take the time to to read and to study and to understand because success leaves clue all right i repeat this success leaves clue and what we have done we have studied the top 100 companies in the world the big companies and some of those clues is what is documented in this book some of the research that we have done is documented in this book and you need this information but just some of the tips that i'm going to give to you today and these are some new innovative approaches that we are recommending to our community in starting a business there's a couple of important things that you want to know you want to know your value proposition Traditionally, when we talk of value proposition, you're talking about how to impact your target market, but we have expanded the scope of the value proposition. You want to ask yourself, how are you building your business, your brand, your corporate culture to impact your workforce? Now, why is this necessary? It is necessary because you want to ensure that you have the highly motivated workforce, highly motivated workforce, because a highly motivated workforce is gonna to lead to what you call reduction in absenteeism, reduction in staff turnover, increase in productivity, increase in the business cash flow. Your corporate culture has to be built out to focus on these things in advance. And here is where you wanna ensure that the right department heads they are proactive. And to be proactive means that you are thinking ahead, you are seeing me on problems, and you're taking informed action to achieve desired results. We help you with that, all right? You wanna build a business, you wanna be successful. Let's talk the fundamentals of getting the business right. It begins with your corporate culture. It begins with your value proposition. Your value proposition, your corporate culture should have four important touch points. I've just looked at one of them. So what is it that your corporate culture is actually saying how it is being built out to reduce absenteeism and staff turnover, to ensure that you have the highly motivated workforce, enough to increase productivity and profitability of the organization. And you have all of these things, it's easy to attract private equity investor, it's easy to attract you know, debt capital, it's easy to attract partners uh, with you, and the list goes on. But let me go on to step two. What is your corporate culture saying about how you're going to impact the ideal client? Now, these are things that you really want to stop, take stock of the realities that surround all of this, and ensure that you have a game plan, a blueprint to speak to these issues. In my book, I've addressed a whole lot of this. I've given a lot of techniques and systems that are being used and can be used to give you the competitive advantage when it comes to building out the foundation of your company. And these things are fundamental. If you don't get this right, you're on shaky ground. If it takes you 5, 10, 15 years to get this right, spend the time to get it right. Because once you get this right, you're set to get the wings to move faster. You don't want to be moving too fast, all right, with the wrong data, with the wrong foundation, because you're going to collapse. And if you don't get it fixed early, you're going to keep collapsing. Take the time, build a solid foundation, and then move the process forward. With us, we can help you to fast track it because we have spent many years doing what we love, researching the data, developing the thesis and the systems, rolling it out. We can now provide you with that proof. So how are you building your corporate culture to impact your ideal client? There's a number of things to look at here. All right. We go deep into that. All right. We also talk about how do you build your corporate culture to impact the public? The average person may want to say the general public is not my consumer. You're perfectly correct with that. So when an influential person in the public says, don't shop there because they don't know enough about you or because they're not comfortable with your brand, it is because you didn't build your corporate culture strong enough to impact 
public's view, to impact influencers' view. We bring you into some of these areas so you have a different perspective in terms of how you're building out your corporate culture to achieve impact across the board. The icing on the cake is how do you build your corporate culture to impact the business cash flow? Again, this is what makes us at Pitch Deck unique because we're going to do things, we're going to give you value proposition that perhaps no one else, depending on where you are in the world, can give this to you. And what do I mean by how do you build your corporate culture to impact the business cash flow? This is what I mean. Traditionally, when you're building your operation, you're focusing on the cash flow potential from the single source of income. So you you set up the business, the business is giving you positive cash flow. What do you do next? What do you do with the excess liquidity? You have it sit where? So because in our network, in our organization, we specialize in financial instruments, we expose you to possibilities. We just don't believe that any form of profits or capital should be sitting in a depreciating, you know, uh, platform. That platform must always be appreciated. And yes, you might want to say you're accumulating the interest, but are you measuring that against inflation? Is this the smartest way to leverage your excess liquidity? So there is so much for us to talk about. And today is just to basically whet your appetite in terms of what Pitch Deck 101 is, is offering. And um, we are now building out a network across uh, most of the developed world. We are properly integrated. We're still building uh, our platform in the US, but we have strong enough connections to make things happen for you faster um, as an entrepreneur in the, the United States of America. So with that being said, I trust you would have enjoyed today's podcast. We look very briefly at the fact that business, many businesses, hundreds of thousands, millions of businesses, you struggle. Why? You're not able to raise capital. And even when you raise capital, you struggle to exit. You struggle because you do not understand your market. And I want to say to you, Pitch Deck 101, is that one-stop shop for you, all right? That one-stop shop for you, where we're gonna work with you to get your business set up properly. We're gonna work with you to help you to get access to capital, debt, equity, credit, or smart capital. I didn't talk about smart capital today, but we have access to all of these players that can really help you to access the much needed capital that you need to move your business forward all right now and i want to emphasize this because any responsible entrepreneur is not going to just focus on access and capital all right there are many equations to this you want to understand the capital portfolio you want to understand how to access the capital portfolio you want to understand how to leverage the capital portfolio. And most importantly, you want to understand how to mitigate the financial instrument. So these four important things you want to stick in your head. And let me repeat it. All right. If you're going into business and you're going to access capital, there's a couple of things that you need to know before you take the capital. Take the time. If you don't have the time to take the time to know this, ensure that someone on your team knows this ensure that you have a business consultant that knows this reach out to us if you need help you need to understand financial instruments it is your knowledge of financial instruments is going to allow you to make a better business decision is it debt that is better for you equity or is it credit or do you need a mix remember i said with credit you may have access to capital at zero percent apr for 6 12 or 18 months that's a kind of financial leverage that, you know, <laughs> is the icing on the cake. It's birthday every day of the week, you know, <laughs> because you, you're accessing capital. You don't have to pay interest back on it. Perhaps you can have a mix of this into your capital portfolio. So you understand it, one, you understand how to access it. That's two. 
all right? And there's a number of things for me to say in terms of the access. You understand how to leverage, all right? The last thing that you want to do is to take capital, you leverage it, and it turn out to be a liability, a bad debt. It's going to hurt you, and it's going to hurt your support network around you. And that's the last thing that you want. You see, we are trained to be proactive. And in the context of being proactive, you're trained to think ahead. You're trained to see beyond the problems and you're trained to take informed action to achieve the desired results. If it sounds, you know, too scientific, take some time out and go and study project management, all right? Studying project management at the degree level was one of the most amazing things that I would have done. We have many persons on our team that would have done so also. And project management really allows you to get that bird's eye panoramic view of the entire project. We call it perhaps the D, the WBS, the work breakdown structure. You want to see the entire, you know, thing in front of you, the entire process in front of you, and know that you have the ability to navigate that entire process. But let's come back to financial instrument. The last element that you want to know here is how to mitigate. Mitigate. And what mitigation is saying is that regardless of how high interest rates may be, when you understand debt mitigation, that's power in your hands, all right? Because in the developed world, of course, interest rate fluctuates. You need to know what you're doing, all right? You need to know how to manage your principal balance. All right, you need to understand this entire process. And in understanding this entire process and knowing perhaps how to shift the model of your debt, it can give you tremendous leverage. Now, the other thing that I want to say, in taking a debt, and I want to emphasize this a whole lot, as an investor, as a person, you know, position yourself to build wealth. The cost of the debt, yes, is important to look at this. But you know what is much more important? How well you can leverage this debt to cash flow. Now, if you're able to leverage it, all right, if you're able to maximize on the debt leverage for it to pay, your principal balance and interest and insurance and tax and still have a decent amount of profit left over, you know that you have stability in this process, is one of the most important things for you to, to understand. Because every debt internationally is going to be subject to your, your principal obligation, your tax up, your interest obligation, your insurance and tax, depending on the type of, of debt that you're taking, the type of investment portfolio that you're going into. And once you're able to do these analysis, all right, and uh, objectively predetermine the positive cash flow state that the debt is going to be in, that is money in the bank. So these are some of the things that we We'll go into some of it we may not necessarily discuss publicly, you know, in the interest of protecting our brand. But um, in the one-on-one, -on -one, as we interface with our clients, we'll go much deeper into this. So I really trust that you had, this is us, the icing and the cake, you know, but I want to encourage you to peruse um, our website. Um, there's so much of information on this website that I want you to take the time and navigate it. The website is pitchdeck101.org. And feel free to reach us. Let's have that conversation. So whether you're in the U.S. or you're a foreign national and want to set up your business in the U.S., um, myself and my team at Pitchdeck101 at uh, Global Capital Inc. and 10x branding and marketing LLC. We are here to give you that one-stop shop to get your business set up properly. All right. So 
looking forward to engaging with you in the event that you're joining me for the first time. My name is Gary Thompson. I'm a business development consultant by profession. I'm a humanitarian by nature, and I'm the self-published author, including 10X Branding and Marketing Group, The Psychology of Money and Impact Marketing and Branding. Be blessed and see you in the next broadcast.